Hi guys, Rob here with Rubber Toe Assembly. Today we're going to show you how to do the lifetime shed doors. So getting right to it, this is how I do it. Uh, first thing is I check all where the doors handles are going to go through on the plastic and you have to deburr uh, a lot of times, most of the time rather. You have to uh, cut off all your excess plastic buildup that's there in the door so the handles fit nice and slut, flush. You see how I'm rubbing my hand there, nice and flush. You have to clear out all the excess plastic, deburr it from all that. And then your edge looks pretty good there. Sometimes I slice the edge if there's ex excess plastic there because you're going to slide a uh, door end channel down there in a minute here. This is looks like it's the right door. So uh, the right door is the one you open first and then the left door is going to have deadbolts on the top and the bottom where the channel is. That's the door channel I'm picking up there. Make sure the holes line up with the right door which is going to have the indented side of that door channel is going to face inward and it's going to lock into the other door channel on the left. So as you see there there's no deadbolts that go on the top of the right hand door they go on the left so you don't have to worry about putting a deadbolt in here like the other door. You just slide it right on the top like so. Sometimes Sometimes people that aren't as tall as me lay the lay the door sideways vertically or on the ground and slide it in that way and you have to bang it with a mallet. But advantages of being tall again, I can just go vertical with that, slide it down. It's a lot easier because you have the weight of the metal and you, but you got to be tall guy. So uh, after that, then I go down to this position with the door. Um, if you have two people. Building the thing is always the best way. Um, I found a way to be doing by myself over the years. And uh, this is how the door handle goes on. You put the door hardware according to the instructions through just like so. The names of these pieces are in the instructions. I believe that's a 7 16 nut that goes on the end of these two 7 16 bolts that go through the trigger enclosure for the handle, the right hand door handle. And then I just give them a couple of turns with the open end wrench. It should be good. There's two little spacers that have to go in there according to the great picture that they will show you with the instruction book. Little spacers and then it gets that plate and you have that little swinging loop on the left. It's just like a regular door. Here is your right hand door handle. Consists of two pieces. I put the top plastic piece as shown it has two little nibs there you just pop them into the edges that go all the way in I just spread it open a little put the nibs in slide it down the little channel and it pops into those little holes and it needs to move the way you just saw me moving it back and forth if it's a little rough then you want to make it so it's not so rough because there's a spring that's gonna pull it back down so it gets inserted through the right hand door just as you see there and it's going to get a little uh, plastic attachment for that metal piece to uh, go up against. Okay, so I'm putting the door handle on first. I always put this screw first and just leave it a little bit loose so I can line up the two holes towards the top there. As you see, there's two more holes on the top of the handle and they're going to get two more screws with washer on the top panel. So those screws, you want to line them up in the holes, preset holes, so you want that little bit of a play so you can line up, line them up perfectly. Boom, I put at least one. Most of the time I just put the top two holes and then come back and catch that first one at the bottom after. Yep, that's what I'm doing here as well. Boom, boom, so the top are nice and snugged up. You set your drill torque settings, of course, at a low setting and you zip, zip. So now the handle's tight, and then I complete the last plastic piece I was just talking to you about. And it's to be put on just as shown. This is a little tricky. You get in there, there's a preset hole through that inside of the right-hand door handle. You just put one single screw by itself. Notice the long number two Phillips drill bit tip that I have in there. It makes things a lot easier when you have a long tip. It goes into that hole, just as you see there and I just hold it firmly when it's lined up perfect and it's on just like that. 
Um, if it's the first time doing this, you probably want to use a long, regular Phillips hand screwdriver to put that piece on. It just takes quite a few turns. So zip, zip, it's on. You run the spring through the hole as just shown there. Real quick, real quick. Boom, attach it to the left, run it through with that little screwdriver. Makes it a little easier to hook that second one and the trigger works. All right, that was your right-hand door handle. Now this is your left-hand door. You run the pole tubes. There's two long pole tubes and two short pole tubes. Depending on which side your doors are gonna be on, the gable, the, the size of the gable, the big gable gets the one with the long tubes, which is your side gable, and the gable that's going to go in the middle will be the shorter one. So looks like the side one. So that's a long tube, and it's, and there's an indentation, if you see there, at the bottom of that tube that's going to be towards the front of that uh, piece that you put in there for the doors. And then uh, you see, just like so, give the top of the tube a couple of taps until you can feel that it's sunk into that bottom piece and that's where your cotter pin is going to go. You come around the front, that little channel has to be lined up with that hole so it goes through nice and easy. Boom! Run your cotter pin through just like so and then I come around the other side and with a pair of needle nose pliers, yep yeah, as you see there, just grab one end of the cotter pin which is a little longer than the other and then the shorter end and just bend them just as you see so right there. And voila, the cotter pin is inserted. It's holding the door on there, at least where the tube is. Then I swing it, give it a couple taps on the deadbolts, one on the top, one on the bottom. And then I bring my ladder and lean it against that just for a few moments while I do the right hand door. That will be your left hand door. So, while the ladder is holding that, give a little bit of an angle, I usually do that not too much because you don't want to, to push the ladder and slide it over and fall down so you insert the right hand door tube, the long one because these are your side doors, the same fashion as the first one with that little indentation towards the front and the plastic piece that it pops down into uh, that little hole in that has to be facing towards the, towards the front as well give it a couple of taps like so so you feel, okay, it's down, I just felt it hit the bottom. And then you come around the front, and if everything's lined up perfectly, which it takes, you take a few minutes to line it all up perfectly in the beginning, makes all the difference in the world. See how quick and easy that cotter pin just slides right through there, perfect. Of course, uh, the concrete being nice and perfect and level is the best way to go with these larger size ones anyways, or all of them in general. The flatter foundation you have, the easier it is to build these. And so then I swing the right hand door in and put my arm through the hole in the window because I always put the windows on last just for that reason. So, and I lock that deadbolt. It's leaning against the ladder, yep, supposedly. And so that should be okay on those doors. And then I usually put the gable on right after that. Anyways, jumping over to the uh, center gable doorways, sometimes you have to do that turn it upside down and push push all that uh, plastic build up on the inside the tube there it pushes it right out and you need a little extra oomph I call it to push that pole through you can do it sideways with laying down and I think that's how the instructions tell you and um, and hit it with a mallet but it's just takes a long time and it's hard to keep that thing I just use the ground to my advantage and push that thing through anyways much like the doors you just saw these are going to go on with the two shorter poles. As you can see, that uh, door pole is uh, a little bit shorter than the side door ones because it's going to be a smaller gable. Anyways, same fashion, you run your cotter pin through the front with the indentation on that pole, the same as the other ones, pointing towards the front. As you can see, there's a cotter pin. You get a pair of needle nose, bend the sides so it's locked on there. If you make a mistake and you have to pull one of these cotter pins out, you just uh, you just bend them back straight. The way you see there, I bent them closed. You would just bend them back straight. Hopefully they don't break. And gently slide that cotter pin out if you can. And then kind of straighten it out and make it straight again. Like a, you want a straight toothpick type shape if you want, if you will. And um, so then your 
left hand door is ready to go until the right hand door is done I use my ladder again in this way to hold it the left hand door has the door channel with the indentation if you notice there facing outward and now this is the right hand door dropping the right hand door pole in looks like it's going pretty easy nice sometimes they go easy sometimes not so easy and I'm using the ground to my advantage again just to kind of pull down and push that excess buildup comes right out the top all that plastic stuff Ugh. anyways uh, flip the door back over right side up it's ready to go sometimes that pole if you can't spin it you have to put a little screwdriver in that hole or maybe the needle nose pliers in that little top hole and kind of twist it so the bottom hole is lined up that's what I'm doing there by hand so it must have been an easy one to spin then that top hole uh, that bottom hole rather is lined up at the bottom with the insert give it a couple of taps on the top sinks it down in there then I come around with the final cotter pin <laughs> and doing all this makes that cotter pin slide in nine times out of ten the first time when all these steps are taken poof yeah and there you have it now you go on the side and the side bend the cotter pin closed so it holds it just like the other ones and right here I'm going to lock that bolt and hold the doors because they just stay lined up when you put that top gable on <laughs> you want as many ways that door can be held as possible especially if you're by, by yourself here I can do this trick because I'm tall once again two people doing this this always works out better one person can hold the doors and the other person does all the rest anyways then the, you just put the top gables on I got other videos for that hope you enjoyed watching how we do the doors uh, give us a uh, question if needed please subscribe thank you guys rubber toe assembly over now